We don't only, you know, acknowledge that Israel is practicing apartheid, but also that it's a settler colonial entity and that it's committing genocide against the Palestinian people. So we use um, terms much, much broader than apartheid. It is interesting to see organizations um, start to acknowledge or confront certain features of Zionism, like apartheid, but still refuse to talk about the occupation, still refuse to mention settler colonialism. The term apartheid itself legitimizes the idea that the problem in Palestine is a legal one, and that recourse can be had in bodies of international law. Categorizing the Palestinian struggle first and foremost as a struggle against legal inequality or apartheid within the settler state is a different proposition. If they dismantled apartheid without looking at the broader context of settler colonialism and occupation, then the Palestinians who are living in refugee camps in Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, living in cramped conditions, um, who've had to en endure being refugees for generations, are completely cut off um, from, from the context of justice. When we look at the amnesty report, the issue with that is that they do limit themselves to the term apartheid. Just because legal apartheid was dismantled in South Africa, the long-term effects of it and the racial inequality that is drawn on economic lines and on, on racial lines still very much exists in South Africa. So if we apply that analogy to Palestine, um, it, it shows that inevitably um, targeting apartheid as a legal system is not enough and will not bring justice um, for the Palestinian people. When reports like this come out, they're essentially giving Israel the blueprint to continue to exist as an occupation and to continue to um, cause injustice against the Palestinian people while still maintaining some sort of legitimacy within a legal framework. Um, so by reducing it to apartheid, they imply that you know this is one problem that can be fixed, and if that problem is fixed, then Palestinians have justice, when we know that that's not the case, that Palestinians will only have justice when we have the right of return, when all Palestinians can return to our homeland, not just in the West Bank and, or in Gaza, but wherever, wherever we may be. The justifications they use for having separate license plates, separate roads and settlements are, are things that extend beyond the apartheid framework. They use the idea of Palestinian terrorism, you know, to justify this. You know, these rights organizations acknowledging that Palestinians are resisting annihilation and are resisting um, for a reason, they allow this apartheid um, term to flourish. If apartheid is dismantled, it, it makes it seem like Palestinians don't have uh, the right to resist this injustice because it's not even acknowledged uh, by these organizations. I think that the fact that Amnesty released uh, this report supposedly condemning um, the Zionist state for their apartheid practices is definitely something that came way too little, too late, um, and it just shows that um, they're trying to maintain their legitimacy, um, matching what people on the ground have been saying um, for decades. When Amnesty International came out with the report on apartheid, they didn't you know, mention the occupation. And when they were asked what their position on the occupation is, they said that they have no position on the occupation. It's not even something that they would condemn. Instead, they want to focus on Israel's obligation as the occupier, implying that you know, as long as there is no apartheid legal system, that Israel can continue to exist as a settler colonial entity and, you know, can continue to, to bombard Gaza and, and kill Palestinians. It's not just about racial inequality, it's about settler colonialism. Land grabs are made every day, Palestinians are kicked out of, out of their homelands, and there are over 10 million Palestinians who don't live in Palestine, who are refugees scattered around the world or languishing in refugee camps in neighboring Arab countries. How can we talk about Palestinian rights or the Palestinian struggle when we take them out of the equation by focusing just on racial inequality within Palestine?